How's it going everybody? Hope you're all doing well out there. I'm back with some more Home Assistant content today. As you probably already know, I'm rebuilding the control system for my little automated garden in the basement. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the wireless AC power control that I'm doing in my system. I'll tell you all about these little power bars that I've got, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and how I got them into Home Assistant. Before I get rolling on this, I just wanna take a quick second to thank all my members for joining the channel and directly supporting me. Thank you very much to Rick, Tony, Kenneth, Mark, and all the breadboarders. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. One quick note to make on something that I've changed. I used to have a tier of membership called Home Assistance where if you subscribe to that, I would remote in and help you with your system, but I've canceled that and I'll probably bring this back, although it may be in a different form than a channel membership. So if you'd like one-on-one -on -one help with your system, just reach out to me and we'll chat. So Tuya sent these strips out to me to try in my new system. They're not paying me to make this video or a review or anything like that, but thank you to Tuya for sending me the gear so I can beat it up and share my thoughts and experiences on it. The strips that I received were branded as Jinvu. You'll see this form factor branded under a ton of different names, but they're all the same. They've all got the four outlets with the USB bank and the Tuya components under the hood. These things run on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so you gotta make sure that your router is still capable of doing that. Most are backwards compatible, but it's something to check anyway. As I said, you get these four individually controllable AC outlets on each one of these strips, plus there's a bank of USB power outlets at the top that's controllable all as one as a group. In my new system, I have four little stations, and each station has one of those custom PCBs that I made, as well as one of these controllable power strips, and I'm mainly using these things to control my grow light on off times and to run the two pumps that I have in each one of my nutrient reservoirs. So each res has a stir pump, which just kind of circulates all the stuff inside, keeps it well mixed. And of course I could run this to like a constant power supply and have it just running all the time, but I figured I have some spare outlets on these things. So I might as well run the pump at intervals throughout the day and save a little bit of electricity. And then the other pump that I use only runs a couple times a night. It's the one that actually feeds out the nutrient solution to the plants. So what do I like about these things? Number one has got to be the price of them. The last time I checked on Amazon, these things were about 30 bucks American. So that's a little over $7 that you're paying per controlled outlet, which is tough to beat. Second thing I like would apply to any power strip, any controllable power strip, I guess, not necessarily just this one, but I do like how compact this thing is. You got your four outlets right next to one another. It's, it's a fairly compact little box. If you have one spot where you need multiple devices controlled independently of one another, it's a lot nicer to use one of these and have a single plug that goes into the wall as opposed to stacking a bunch of the single controllable outlets because these get pretty bulky. Another thing I really like about the Tuya stuff is that Tuya itself is choosing to support the Home Assistant community and they've actually built the integration that you use to bring these things into Home Assistant. I think that's awesome. I've been running four of these things in my garden for about four months now and I've been really impressed with how stable and how dependable the integration is in Home Assistant. I have a couple other brands that I use and I find that I'm going downstairs to reboot them much more often than I have with these, I think of the four strips, two of them I've had to reboot once each over the past four months. So they've been pretty stable. Okay, so the things that I dislike about these power strips, the first thing I'm sure there are tons of people out there that are just as sad as I am about, and that is early on in the build process for the Tuya integration in Home Assistant, the one that I'm using right now, there were rumors that there would be a method for locally controlling your devices, meaning your power strips or whatever else you're trying to work with would not need their own connection to the internet to control, which is something that's obviously very important to most people using Home Assistant. But there's no local control. I don't know if it's coming. I kind of doubt it. I don't think it's ever going to show up. So that sucks, but it's not a total deal breaker for me in my case. I have a very stable internet connection. And then if you're worried about, you know, security or vulnerability to your network, then there are some steps that you can take, like uh, putting all of your IoT stuff or Internet of Things stuff on its own separate VLAN or network, just so it's all grouped together 
and it's unable to talk to any of your more sensitive devices. You know, if you've got PCs on your home network or servers or whatever that may be. Something else I noticed is that these things are only rated for 10 amps of current and not 15 amps like some other smart plugs. They're definitely like a light duty, I would say. You can just tell by the feel of it that it's not really geared to handle a bunch of power, but it's more about the smarts inside. So if you're running something that's very power hungry, like a, like a big grow light that's pulling 700 or 800 watts or something, you probably want to put that on its own individual smart plug and then just use smaller devices like pumps or something like that on here. I'd recommend tallying up the power draw for all the devices that you plan to plug into this thing and make sure that it doesn't come anywhere near 10 amps or 1250 watts if you're here in North America. My last little complaint about these things is that out of the box there are no mounting holes on here, there are no tabs or brackets or anything, so it's kind of a pain to have to mount these to anything. So my solution was just to go into SketchUp and draw myself up a little bracket that I could print. It's just got four screw holes and then it's a pressure fit. So the back of this thing has some rubber feet on it and that allows it to slide in nice and snug, and keep it in place and there you have it, pretty snazzy, hey? So all things considered, I like these power strips. I think they're a really good fit in my garden where I've got these locations that have a bunch of devices in one spot that need unique power. I think what you're getting for what you're paying is really good value and it's too bad about the local control thing, but in my case, that's not a deal breaker. Okay, I'll show you how to get these things into Home Assistant now. Here's the summary for the process. First, I'm going to import these power strips into the Tuya app on my phone. Then I'm going to create a cloud project in my Tuya developer account and link the app on my phone to that cloud project. And then I'm going to add the integration in Home Assistant to tie in the cloud project to my system. You don't actually have to be a developer for the Tuya developer account, and it's free. We just need one of these accounts to create that cloud project that the Home Assistant integration requires. So step one is to download the Tuya Smart Life app on your phone and create an account. After signing in, I went to add a device and nothing showed up with the scan, so I manually added a Wi-Fi power strip. Next, you're prompted to enter the credentials for the network that you'll be connecting the device to. I followed the instructions to unplug the power strip for 10 seconds and then plug it back in. and then reset it by holding the power button for five seconds. When it came back online, the power LED was blinking slowly, so I selected that option, and then I was prompted to join the hotspot that the power strip was now providing, so I switched my phone Wi-Fi over to this hotspot and confirmed. The device was then discovered and added to my account. You can change the name of it here if you like. From this point I could now control the outlets from the app. I went through the same setup for three additional power strips and I'm ready to move on to the next steps. Next, you're going to need to go to the Tuya website and create an account here. This account will be different and completely separate from the Tuya app account that you create on your phone, so you can't just log in with the same credentials. When you've got this account created, go to the IoT platform and log in. By the way, if you'd prefer to work off of a list of instructions, then search for Home Assistant Tuya and you'll find this page that steps through everything I'm about to show you. Once you're logged in, you'll click Cloud on the left and then Development. You'll see I've been messing around here and I've created three projects already and oddly enough you can't delete them, but I'll just create a new one anyway with the blue Create Cloud Project button. So give it a name. For industry, you'll pick Smart Home development method will be smart home as well, and then pick the data center nearest you.
On this authorized API services list, you'll need to scroll to the bottom of the left column and add the device status notification API over to the right column by clicking the little arrow. Now we can hit authorize and we're in the new project. There are a couple important things on this tab that we'll need later that we'll return to. From here, I need to associate my Tuya Smart Life app on mobile with this project, which will import the four power strips that I configured in the app. To do that, you go to the Devices tab, and then link Tuya App Account, then hit the blue Add App Account button. This is gonna pop up a QR code on your computer screen that you need to scan with your phone's camera from the app. So I'll hop back on my phone in the Tuya app. If you click this me button in the bottom bar, it brings you to a profile page. And in the top right, you have this little button here that lets you scan a QR code. So you'll press this button and then use the camera to scan the QR code that's up on your screen. When you confirm the login on the phone, your computer screen will change and you can finish linking your Tuya account. I left mine on automatic and gave full device permissions for read, write and manage. Now I can see my four power strips in my cloud project and they're ready to be controlled. The final thing to do here is go into Home Assistant and set up the Tuya integration so that we can now tie the cloud project into Home Assistant. I'm gonna go back to the overview tab since there's some info here that I'm gonna need to copy over. So here I am back in my very pristine Home Assistant interface. At this point, the only thing I've done is install my add-ons in the last video and nothing else has been touched. And just to note here, the layout for the UI in Home Assistant has actually changed with the latest update. So I think it's no longer called configuration, but settings. I'm going to go to configuration, devices and services, and then I'll add an integration and search for Tuya. got to pick my country and this has to match the country that you chose when you registered for your Tuya developer account and then I need to paste in the IOT access ID which is right here on the cloud project overview page as well as the access secret which is right below it. This account and password are the credentials from your Tuya Smart Life mobile app not the developer account that kind of threw me for a loop for the first time but use the credentials from your mobile app here. Now I can submit this and I won't be assigning them to any areas right now, so I'll just finish up. Okay, now if I go back to my dashboard, since this is pretty much a brand new install still, my dashboard is being managed automatically and all the switches for all the outlets that I just added have been added to a card on my overview page. I'm going to be organizing this a little bit better in the future, so I'm going to edit this overview dashboard by clicking these three dots here and I'll just tell it that I want to take over and start with a blank slate. There's really no harm in leaving these on here if you're just getting started, and of course I'd recommend testing all the new switches to see that they're actually properly controlling your outlets. Mine all worked great, and I now have full control over all these outlets from Home Assistant so I can start automating them. Now, I don't want to have to remember which power strip number and outlet number does what, so I'm going to give them all friendlier names. To do this, I'll go to Configuration or Settings, Devices and Services, and then Devices, and I'll start with the first power strip. I'll start by renaming the device itself, which represents this group of entities. I'll call it Smart Power Strip Station 1. And then I'm going to go through and rename each of the controllable outlets on this thing. For each, I'm going to change the friendly name, which is more for my benefit, and the entity name, which is more for the system itself. The scheme I'll go with here is PS for power supply, then the number, dash, the outlet number, so this is PS1 outlet 1, and then something descriptive. This one will be the first grow light in my 4x6 tent, which I'm referring to as tent 1, so I'll call it T1 light 1. The entity ID, which will just be a switch dot and then everything in lowercase, separated by underscores, I'll just make the same essentially. I could shorten it and just call this switch dot PS1 underscore 1 or something, but I like very descriptive verbose names, so the entity ID does not need to match the friendly name, but I'm going to do that in this case. Alright, done deal. I'll just go through and edit the rest of the names for each entity that's part of this device, and then I'll skip through the rest of the other three power bars and we'll make you watch that.
Okay, well everything is renamed now, so the next thing I'm going to do is create a new view on my dashboard that shows all these controls so I can manually turn things on and off and see what state they're in. I'll hit the three dots in the top right and click Edit Dashboard, then I'm going to hit this plus sign to create a new view and I'll call it Power. A nice and simple way to organize this would be to add an Entities card for each one of the power strips and then group all the outlets together. There are a few different ways that you could do this, like making one big entities card that has little headers inserted to delineate each power strip, or you could make some sort of a grid or whatever you like. I'm just gonna go add card, entities, and that's the plural form, not the singular entity card. Then I'm gonna title this station one. I want the icons colored by state, so when an outlet is on, the icon turns yellow. And then the show header toggle will give me a switch at the top of the card that allows me to turn every single outlet in the card on or off at the same time, so I'll keep that. And then I'll go through and start adding my entities. Since I already renamed everything, I can just type PS1 and it should filter out the five switches that are associated with that power strip. And I have a page that I can flip to now where I can see and control all my outlets. Obviously I don't want to just be sitting at my computer or phone turning things on and off manually, so in another video we're going to look at a really nice clean and easy way to schedule things in Home Assistant and control these outlets based on the schedules that we build for things like lighting or plant feeding or whatever else you can think of. That's it for this one everybody, thank you for watching as always. Please, if this video was of use to you, consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, commenting, all that good stuff that you hear on every single video. You know the drill. Thanks guys, and see you on the next one.